Good morning, brethren. You are welcome to today's family devotional. God bless you as you join us. Kindly remember to subscribe to our channel. Please pass your comments as you deem fit. Press the notification button so that you get to know when we upload new videos, which we often do. Also, please uh, like our videos. God bless you. Um, today, of course, um, we are in the same series. This message is number 62, number 62 in the series that we are doing. Uh, we are, we are, we are intending to cover the entire Bible, bringing out the, uh, messages that the Lord intends us to know from them and from Genesis to Revelation. So today we are in message number 66. And, um, oh, very sorry, 62, apologies, 62. And um, we, so we implore you to please check whatever we are saying from the Bible, the passages which I'll be giving to you. <clears throat> the Bible passages today is taken from the book of Proverbs chapter, sorry, the book of Psalm. 29. 29. 1 to 11. Verse 1 to 11. Psalm 21, verse 9, 29. I'm sorry. Verse 1 to 11. Verse 1 to 11. And the next one we are taking from the book of uh, Mark. Mark 11. 11. 27 to 12. 27, verse 27 to 12. chapter 12, 12. verse 12. And then the Leviticus one we are taking from the book of Leviticus, nine, chapter 9, one to ten. verse uh, 1 to 10. To Sorry, chapter, one, chapter nine, 9, 1 to 10, uh -huh, to chapter 10, 10, 10 to 20. verse 20. God bless you. It's difficult combining these ones together sometimes. So, um, the topic for today is you are authorized to preach and teach the gospel. You are authorized to teach and preach the gospel. Amen. And um, we are taking a, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for another great opportunity to be in your presence this day to learn from you to guide our lives, to make our paths straight, to correct the mistakes we may have been making, to prevent us from making further mistakes, and to live according to your will. Lord God Almighty, we thank you for everything that you have been doing for us and the grace of salvation. We also thank you for the fortune that you grant to us to live a life that is livable. We appreciate you, Lord, for your provisions, protection, safety, security, and all that you have been doing for us. Accept our thanksgiving in your who assures me. Almighty Father, we bless you. We say thank you for all you have been doing. Blessed, blessed be to your name. Daddy, we appreciate you once again, for everything you've done for us, accept our thanksgiving in Yahushua's name. Uh, Daddy, this morning we come before your throne of mercy. All our sins, please forgive us. Our individual, our family, our national, 
and international sins, please, whatever nature they may take, please forgive us in Yahushua's name, even as we also forgive those who sin against us in Yahushua's name. Today, Lord, come and speak with us, guide us, let it be well with us. Whatever we hear today, please let it profit our lives for good, and at the same time, let it count for us on the day of resurrection. Thank you, Father. Blessed be to your name. In your virtuous, mighty name, we have prayed. Uh, the Bible passage we will read now is the book of uh, Psalm, Psalm 29. 29, verse 1 to 11. 11. Please listen attentively. Ascribe to the Lord, you heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord, glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord, glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The, the God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon live like a cow, Syrian like a young white ox. The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert. The Lord shakes the desert of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists the oaks and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Amen. May the good Lord bless every one of us, my listeners today, and all those to whom it will be shared. May the Lord God Almighty bless us all with peace, total peace in Yahushua's name. Now, um, that passage that is read to us still reminds us of one thing. You read the first few sentences, Ascribe unto the Lord the glory he deserves. Ascribe to the Lord the honor he deserves. Ascribe to the Lord the worship he deserves. That's to tell us the Lord is everything to us and he takes all the glory for whatever, whoever we may be. So, giving his glory to either ourselves by way of pride. You remember the rich man that says, um, I did it by my power. And God took his life overnight. That will not be our portion in Yahushua's name. Remember Nebuchadnezzar that says, he is the one that has the power to dominate the entire world. God turned him to a beast. I pray we will not experience the punishment of God in Yahushua's name. May his mercy continue to be for us. Let us give all glory, honor, and adoration unto the Lord. All, the, all praises, all thanksgiving. Let's give them unto the Lord because he is the owner of them all. Then also, it also talked about the awesomeness of God, the voice of God. When the voice of God comes on, it thunders. You know, it's everything shakes. Every, I mean, the awesomeness of God cannot be described because in fact is to be most feared, to be most reverenced, to be most worshipped. So never ascribe the honor of God to anything else but God Almighty himself who owns it. So the power of the Lord was also described in that place. You can see those descriptions. You can listen to them again so that because of our time, we'll be able to repeat them. So as the Lord God Almighty lives, may we heed that call to ascribe unto the Lord what belongs unto the Lord. That is his glory without sharing it with anybody in Yahushua's name. Now, let's take more points. Yes, ma'am. Give glory to God always. Yeah. 
the voice of the Lord manifests miracles. Mm -hmm. Voice of the Lord is voice of authority. Mm -hmm. The Lord speaks. Mm -hmm. You can see the Lord, the voice of the Lord is the one that manifests miracles. God said in Genesis 1 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And God began to decree. He decreed light to come. Light came. He decreased the stars, the moon, the sunshine, everything to come. They came. He decreased the fishes, the, the animals. Of the, or throughout this world to come, he decreed the plants, he decreed everything. Then on the sixth day, he created man, made out of uh, mold, but receiving his breath of life, which we are still breathing today. From the day we are born, we keep on breathing the breath of life. And the day that one stops is the day we are gone in this world. May the breath of life never ceased from our lives before our appointed times in Yahushua's name. So uh, let's go to Mark. Mark 11, 27 to 23. He went to Jerusalem again, the chief priest, the scribes, teachers of the It's Lord. okay. Um, Christ again in his evangelism um, tour went to Jerusalem again and he went there to be healing, to be preaching, and to be teaching the word of God. You see, Christ set the example. We are supposed to move out and be preaching and teaching. And like I said in this topic, you and I are authorized to preach, teach, and even baptize people into the kingdom of God. Amen. You, Matthew 28 verse 16 says, Go ye into the world, preach, teach the word, and then baptize the people. Amen. So that is the greatest, you see, it is it's unfortunate that we all take the pursuit of pursuing material wealth, financial wealth, everything. We all took to that, but what it's okay for our, to live a comfortable life, but at the same time, the first assignment that Christ gave to us is to preach, teach. That is the spiritual exercise that God wants us to do. That is to save the souls of those that are perishing and bring them into the kingdom of God. To populate the kingdom of the devil and increase the population in the kingdom of God. In fact, Indeed, your whole essence of your going to church, coming born again, doing everything in the spiritual side is for you to preach, teach, and baptize people. Then, essence of your life, you know, to people is Matthew 22, chapter 22, verse 37 to 39. You love your God and you love your neighbor as your self that is a physical manifestation of your love for fellow men the poor the rich the everybody love them even the, your enemies see Christ says I tell you <coughs> excuse me love your enemies pray for them amen so we are to preach teach so Christ came and I was doing the same thing that's the example when people are telling you today that um, until you are specially anointed, until you are given certificate of um, uh, graduation or the certificate of ordination from any from your GO, until your GO releases you, brethren, be careful. Between your GO. Who is a servant of God and the God himself manifest in human being, Christ our Lord, who is your Savior, whom your Geo himself ought to be serving, whose word is authority. Christ says, he didn't tell you you must pass through theological schools, you must have done all this before. Christ himself did not go to any theological school. 
a, a clear demonstration of what he intends for us. You teach yourself the word of God. Read the Bible. Christ read the Bible, then he taught it. Teach the Bible. Then he preached it. Preach the Bible. Christ didn't baptize him physically, anybody, but he authorized us to baptize them by water. Imagine it to be water, flowing water. Amen. Christ authorized us. His own is that he baptized with the Holy Spirit. Once people are baptized in water, then the Holy Spirit will come upon them, and then the Holy Spirit will baptize them, and then you come, you now begin to do the work of God. So when you are going into Christianity or you're already in the ministry, in the church, you are not there to be a bench woman. You're not there to be counting years, days, and you are not there for the rituals of tithing, offering, and all these things. You are there for thanksgiving, and then at the end of the day, learn to the point that you can yourself, yourself, if you want to join the worker, is good. But you can learn to the point that even God himself can choose you to be a worker of his own choice without necessarily attending all this um, uh, ritualized uh, trainings. All right? If you study the Word of God and the Holy Spirit is in you, Christ never attended theological school and he did the marvelous things in this way. He studied the Bible himself. Don't you remember when his great commission, when his commission started? He said, he read, they said he read from the book of Isaiah. I think that's chapter 64 now, if I'm, either 60 or 64, where it says, today, my commission begins. I, I use my word there. That is today, but the, my commission will begin. I've, that this is the acceptable year of the Lord that, you know, I'm to preach, teach, to deliver the oppressed. And he started his ministry. So we are all ministers of God, even now, by virtue of his commissioning us himself. Is it your G.O. that will commission you or Christ himself who spoke authoritatively to you here that you go all out? So be bold enough, but you cannot preach and teach unless you have studied the word of God because you have to know what you want to teach and preach. So you have to study. Christ studied, all right, before he started preaching. So you too, you need to study and preach. And do not, well, if you say you want to go to a theological school, but let it not be the, like the types that we are seeing in the world today, that people go there to obtain certificates, and the so-called teaching they are doing is to uh, make money, not to depopulate the kingdom of God, not to save souls. So you may go to all those trainings for, your, for exposure, but it's not compulsory. If you read the Word of God thoroughly, and you even go to the YouTube and listen more to the Word of God, the explanation of the Word of God, and you invite the Holy Spirit to your life to teach you all things according to the promise of God, He will teach you. So theology school does not make you whatever you think you are. It is God, and He can use you at any point. You desire to preach, teach, and baptize the people. Desire for the desire the work of evangelism. Eh? Desire that position of an evangelist that you preach and teach the word so that the population of the kingdom of God will arise. Amen. Then we talk about uh, the servant, another parable there where the servant leased out his farm to say his servant, the master leased out his farm to the servants, and the servants decided to be unfaithful. When it was time for harvest, he sent his servants to go and harvest for him. <laughs> the people chased him, they may were killed some. Then he sent another, said the same thing. Then he finally said, at least this is my son, they will respect. Honestly, they did worse, and they killed the son. So what would his master do to him? You see, you need to know that the assignment that you are given, there will be a request.
for harvest one day. The assignment entrusted to us is to preach and teach the word of God and baptize people. How much of it have we been able to do? I, I myself, how much people have I baptized? How many people have I baptized? How many, how many preaching and teachings have I? Thank God for this little one that um, at least is the beginning. And you study the word of God. That's why we made it a priority. You can't teach the word of God unless you understand. That's why you need to go through the Bible. That's why we are going through the Bible page by page, sentence by sentence, word by word, so that we we'll know the mind of God. So, brethren, prepare yourself for the Great Commission and throw away wickedness. It's the same thing as like maybe your parent trained you and at the end of the day you become somebody in life and you abandon your parents. That's wickedness. What did those servants do? They did wickedness wickedly to their master. And at the end of the day, what did the man do? He punished them. May we not receive punishment at the end of our journey in this world in Yahushua's name. Very, very important. It's the same thing. When uh, you are entrusted with something, you see, do it well and give returns. You are accountable. Be accountable to who that he in that sent you. Be accountable. Many of us even in mere little positions. We become so organized that we don't want to see our our leaders or our and we don't want to see the master or the owner of the projects or of the organizations. We don't want to be accountable to them. So when you carry yourself beyond whom God has made you, you see that you will be lowered. Accountability is very important. Keep Proper records and be transparent in releasing such records to your master so that he will know, he or she will know how the business is faring. Please go ahead. The teachers of the law question Christ's authority. Okay. Christ queried them on John's authority. Okay, it's not new. Right from the period of the Matthew, we have been saying it that, you know. The Pharisees, they never relented. This time around, they questioned his authority to heal. And some of the things he did on a Sunday, they questioned his authority to do it. Not a Sunday, Sabbath day. Actually, the, one of the things that's still going on now is Sabbath day, the worship day is Saturday. So those who are doing seven-day Adventists, they are really still on the, on the track. The Sunday we are using today, of course, is because uh, the Roman Empire. That's why I'm so, this English Bible that we're all sticking to, that's why today I don't use Jesus. I use Yeshua, the original name, because that one is not polluted. These ones that, the, the Bible that has traveled through Europe to Africa and then from there, that has been doctored and doctored and doctored, especially the King James's version of the Bible. That's why I don't recommend it to anybody. Neither did I profit from it myself. So, doctored and doctored, you see, they have used politics. They have introduced what The Sunday you are worshipping today was introduced by the Romans. You know, when they are saying that they are trying to make peace, you know, they, want, they want a compromise, they want a, what do you, a equilibrium spot. You know, for a situation where they will be at peace, they are God, and at the same time, they will still be, say they are on the side of this God. No, you are either on the side of the true God, or you are on the side of the devil. So if we are to choose today, honestly speaking, everybody, honestly speaking, should revert to Saturday. Saturday is the Sabbath day. All the explanations even in the New Testament, there's nothing like, oh, people are now saying it's because Christ rose on Sunday. It's not true. Is Sabbath day is Sabbath day. That's the original. That's the day that was blessed. Thank God that for His mercies, that in spite of our wayward ways, He's still blessing us. But when we still know the truth now and still stay away from the truth, so I think honestly, Saturday is the best day to worship our Lord. That will be in line with the original intention of God. That was the day God rested and blessed. Amen. Next. The parable of the farmer, mm -hmm. whose sons and servants were killed. Mm. The cornerstone authority to preach okay. and teach come from God. Okay. Christ is the cornerstone. 
rejected by the people when they crucified him and threw him away and then but he became the corner piece because today it became the corner so today it is in Christ's name, in Yeshua's name, that everybody is worshipping. And in his name, on hearing of the mention of his name, all knees shall bow. And all authorities in heaven and on earth have been given unto him. To be our Savior is our Savior already. And he's still the one that carried away our sins. So Christ is the Lord. Yehoshua, the Mashiach, is the Lord. That's why you hear that Yehoshua, I mean Yeshua, Hamashiach, Lion of Judah. Yeshua. That's the honestly, that's his name. Yeshua or Yes or Yehoshua or Jesus. The one introduced by the English people, Jesus, is non existent. There is no J in Hebrew. So uh, when we are saying that it disappears innovative new as if we are introduced something, it has always been there. The pervertedness of human beings' heart is what made the Bible itself questionable today. You see, especially King James's version. So, but don't because of that run away from God. You need to just know the truth and pray according to the truth, and you get your response. Uh, the Pharisees also questioned him on all the powers he is using. Christ himself questioned them, which authority are John, John the Baptist using? He will say, ah, if they say it's from God, uh, they will uh, cure the rot. If they say it's from man, they are in trouble. So Christ says, I won't answer you, but which authority is he using? So, brethren, it's not all these rituals that we are going through in the church. It's not the thing. In fact, the greatest thing in the Bible is Matthew 28, 16. Preach, teach the word of God and baptize them. And then also Matthew 22 37 to 39 Love your God. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do practically demonstrate love to people. Yes, please go ahead. Leviticus 9, 10 1 to 10 says okay. the of the meeting and what to do before the Lord. Okay, now we, thank you ma, we you see, I told you right from the time we entered into Exodus, you see that God started giving detail. When God sends you a message, He will show you what to do, how to do it, and He give you the minutest detail so that you don't miss it. This one is about the preparation for the tent of the meeting. Anytime, hey, thank God for the day we are now because you just wake up in the morning now, you have your bed. You brush your teeth, you eat, and then you go to church. Straight, you enter into the church. It wasn't so in the Old Testament, in the olden days. You can't, even the preparation you will make, the rituals you do. God gave all those details to the priests, Aaron and his descendants, you know, being the priests. God gave them the details, the things to offer. Preparatory to going to the tent of the meeting. The tent of the meeting is just like we call the church today, or the tabernacle, or whatever, where God will meet them. You can't come to God the way you are, just ordinarily in those days. You must perform a lot of rituals. You will perform rituals, then the, uh, the, the priests will perform rituals for you to even enter. They themselves will perform rituals for themselves. Eh? The priest himself. We have to perform the rituals for sin offering and all that. Thank God today, you just go the way you are because the blood of Christ that died for us on the cross of Calvary has washed away all our sins. That's why you have, and now you even have the freedom to enter. You are not even coming. You are not coming to the church of God. What are you doing at home? Even on a worship day, like I said, Saturday, but today, now that people are still worshiping us, and thank God, at least they chose one day. But this thing should not be compromised with the uh, uh, atheist practice. Mm -hmm. The God of the sun is what they worship on the Sunday. So they now put it there, okay, let's turn it. Just like 
they turn uh, um, 25th or whatever in December to Christmas Day. Is it instead of, yeah, instead of, the reasoning may be logical, but Christ was not born on the 15th, 25th. We're just symbolizing it. You know, what we are doing on Sunday today is a symbolization. Why not do the real thing? The Lord God Almighty will help us. So, you see, all the preparations that people have to make, those are the preparations that were the details that were revealed out there. And they did it. Because you can, the glory for the glory of God to come down. There is a lot of preparations in those days. But today, to God be the glory. You dress up, you go to your church, pray to God, and then the Holy Spirit comes down and your prayers are answered and you go back to your home without going with uh, those, without going with any form of animal for rituals. What a great liberty, what a great freedom that Christ secured for us on the platter of gold. But yet, are you still doubting the Christ that saved you? If so, please change today. Come to the Lord. He is your Savior. So let's go. Aaron atoned for his own sin first. Mm -hmm. and do the same mm -hmm. for his people. Mm -hmm. Glory of the Lord appear to the people, mm -hmm. offering unauthorized. Okay, thank you. Laban and Habil. Okay, thank you. You see, all those rituals that I said were performed before even the tent of the meeting was attended, you know. But after the whole preparation, the glory of God now came down. Today, you don't need those rituals before the glory of God will come in your worship center, even in your own home, where you are preaching and teaching and praising the Lord, where you are worshiping Him in truth and in spirit. Now, authorized and unauthorized, in that, this thing leads us back to the topic, that you are now authorized to preach the Word of God. And I told you, Matthew 28, verse 16, makes that clear. That's God, that's Christ, who is the author and finisher of our faith, speaking, directing you, to you directly, to me directly without necessarily going to all these schools of disciples, all these workers in training where they exploit and extort us with money and teaching us not even salvation. You know, you can study the word of God and the spirit of the Lord comes upon you and you move ahead and begin to preach and teach. It's different from, say, you are establishing churches. Preach and teach your people to go to existing churches if they need if you don't have church, I don't, I'm not saying go and establish or if the Lord didn't give you the permission to do so. And and what is the permission? Even where two or three are gathered in my name, Christ says I will be there. He didn't say that uh, until you are released by your geo, until you are done this. So when people, maybe you have ministered to people and they are not, um, you have no place of worship or just like you have been hearing of the deeper life. That's how it started. The deeper life man started preaching and teaching and teaching the word of God. At a point, they had no place to worship. Today, it's become a, a church, a fellowship center, a church, deeper life a church. That's how it started. You too can, God can use you to do greater exploits. So, even though he's... Uh, Previous church, they excommunicated him. Did God excommunicate him? That's why the word of God is revolutionary. Yeah? So if you are preaching and teaching the word of God, and you are so committed to the word of God, you gather people and you begin to preach and teach to them. So God bless you. So let's make sure that we are always eager to teach. We have the authority to preach and teach the word of God without any certificate from any GO that they have idolized today. The certificates they have idolized. Even if you want to wait for the theology school, you know how much they are paying in uh, their theology schools today? Must that, the fact that you don't have that money, I don't have the logistics, the resources to be able to cope, must that prevent you from preaching and teaching the word of God when, did, when Christ did not say you should go to the theology school? Let the Holy Spirit be your teacher. I said the time will come that 
Nobody will need you to teach you again. The Holy Spirit will teach you the Word of God. And He will then preach and teach the Word of God throughout the world. So these are the things. Religious people will tell you, unless you go to a seminary, unless you do this, and, and they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't, what they are teaching is it's not relevant to the kingdom of God. I have been to several of such trainings. I now realize that what they were teaching us did not even address salvation. They are telling us history. They are telling us long stories. But the simple aspect of it Discipleship, preaching and teaching the word of God is not properly covered. So it's for us to learn from all these things. Christ is the one that authorizes you. Go ahead and preach. Oh, I'm not educated, it doesn't matter. The Baba that started redeeming Christian Church of God is a stark illiterate in the Western sense, but he's a uh, professor by excellence in the work of God, because God used him. Whereas today, is a professor Abi, that took over from him. We see how much the church is messing up under his leadership. How the church became a church that is pro-money, not pro-salvation. So, be careful. So, God bless you. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you once again for letting us know and putting it, putting it to the fore that we are not subjected to religious traditions, but to matters of salvation, even in matters of winning souls for you and even preaching and teaching your word. You have removed the yoke of rigid seminary and all that from our neck. That the Holy Spirit will teach all of things if only we bow down to the Holy Spirit. We are grateful to you today that we know that we are commissioned to preach, teach, and baptize the people. Heavenly Father, the grace to comply with this great commission grant unto us in Yahushua's name. Lord God Almighty, I pray that from now onwards, as we do your word, please prosper our ways. Let us make heaven and reign with you. And then, as we preach to people, prepare their hearts for understanding and let them profit from the illustration and let it profit them even to make heaven and reign with you in the end, in Yahushua's name. Thank you, blessed Father. In Yahushua's mighty name, we are praying. Please share this message. God bless you.